everybody, welcome back to Spiritual Devil. Today is a blue day, as you can see the sky is blue. What you may not see, what you can possibly see if you really pay attention, especially as I'm on the overpasses and as long as you have a clear view of the horizon, you might notice that there is an extreme haze on the horizon. By extreme, what I mean is when you look, and I'm, I'm just guesstimating, I don't, I don't really know the exact angle, but let's say that when you look at up to a height of about 30 degrees, maybe even further, you can see kind of a brownish, reddish brown haze in the horizon. I'm passing plastic bags all over the median. There's these white flowers that came out after the rainfall that we had. You see the sun over on my shoulder. We're having a beautiful day, even though I'm mentioning some of the not as beautiful things that I am experiencing right now. And the reason that I'm sharing that with you is because I'm not, I'm not tuned out. I haven't checked out of what it is that I'm participating in. I can see everything around me. And so, including the people here taking a picture, it looks, oh my God, that was amazing. There are some people who look like they were an older, a much older couple, and they're taking a, a selfie in front of a, a, in front of some, I really don't know, some landscape. And anyway, that was a really awesome moment of seeing our older and wiser generation using a technology for something fun. So many of us are looking at our devices and only browsing the manufactured and advertised news. And some of that is just to drive us to continue to make the same selections over and over. And by the same selections, what I mean is we may continue to read those news feeds over and over in order to avoid looking at what's around us. I just passed a porcupine on the road. It was a roadkill. And also there's a hitchhiker in the median there. And I'm merging into traffic at 60 miles an hour while trying to maintain a topic that I'm, I'm discussing, which is if you look at the horizon, if you look over my shoulder and don't just pay attention to the sun and the, the sunshine and the rainbows, you might also see the plastic strewn about all of the medians and the skinny cactus, the skinny cactus that none of which has appeared to have fruited. You may begin to notice anomalies even up to and including Bruins, bears. You might notice trouble brewing at your local campgrounds, depending on where you're at. Now, this haze on the horizon thing doesn't seem like a huge deal until we start factoring in the amount of time that has passed since we had the ability to really grow, easily grow, and I'm not talking about with chemicals and additives, when we've been able to easily grow something that was rewarding. In many cases, we're left with a lot of rubbish blowing across the freeway whenever we have a windy day. And we're left with these pieces, pieces all over the place, pieces that we might need to eventually pick up. And we don't quite want to open our wallets to help free up those dollars for something like cleaning up trash. Why is that? Because we don't want to pay for irresponsibility. None of us wants to pay for irresponsibility. None of us wants to continue to wait and wait on somebody else to do the right thing. Most of us 
expect for one another to do the right thing because that's theoretically how we were raised, right? Now, if we were raised a certain way, but we also find that for whatever reason, there's no leadership that's paying attention to when people are doing the wrong thing, like chucking trash out the windows, uh, whether it's on purpose or just by mistake, then we either recognize that we're doing things irresponsibly or we're doing things because it doesn't, it doesn't cost us anything one way or the other. I once had a group of people with whom I communicated and one in the group always talked about their roommate and how they chucked all of the supposedly recyclable content into the regular trash bin because they didn't, they didn't care. It's not like they were being taxed one way or the other and it takes effort. It takes even the, even though it's a minuscule amount of effort, it takes effort to I don't even know what that was. It looked like a large wild hog roadkill. Some purple and yellow flowers in the median. Looks like springtime in some cases because of this rainfall that we finally received. And I'm looking forward to seeing what I'm gonna see on my walk today. The thing is that I'm discussing primarily in every case that you've listened to here, things like what do you see on the horizon? Now the back windshield is a little bit dusty. So if you look past the dust as we come down this hill, and just look up at the sky, notice that some of the sky is blue. And then at the horizon, you have this kind of a milky haze color. All of these things, the, clen the clen cleanliness of our air, the precipitation we receive, the number of bugs we see or don't see after a rainfall, all of these things are the primary conversation that I'm attempting to have with you, my loved ones. And for some reason, this conversation keeps coming up a little bit short. And so some of you may feel that I'm being a little short with you, a little bit impatient, petulant. These are reflections. Any feeling that we have is usually a reflection of our own internalization of what we are, who we are. So if we're impatient, we're gonna think that we're seeing someone being impatient. If we're hearing someone talk a certain way, we have no idea how loud how loud the road noise is. We have no idea why this person is talking in this manner, why they might whisper in another situation. We have no idea what energy does when it resonates with one another. I have a, a, an inkling of a concept what energy does. Because as I talk like this, I find that I am naturally able to say what's on my mind. And some who are naturally able to hear what's being said are hearing what's being said. They don't have to click comments. They don't have to, to add to a, a description uh, words that are already there. The discussion continues to the point where it evolves into something much more than what it was to begin with. See, what what we oftentimes try to do is just give icebreakers back to each other, back and forth to each other. And by this, what I mean is I used to hang out with a lot of family, and in almost every case, the conversation always started with, and I'm in San Antonio, so I'm not trying to promote anything, I'm just gonna tell you. Almost always started out with, Hey, did you see the Spurs game? How did, how did, what did you think about so-and-so on the Spurs? What did you think about blah, blah, blah? And I'm also in Texas, so obviously when football's occurring, hey, how about them Cowboys? It's a common thing. All of these different ideas, all of these different concepts, including moving out of the slow lane when you know that you've got at least miles to go you don't want to just continue along at the slow speed because that's where everyone's merging and 
trying to get into the flow of things. All of these things do not detract from the ongoing construction that I see around me where it's like we're kicking up dust. Like I'm going to be in, in probably about, I don't know, 100 yards or so. We're going to pass by some construction where they're kicking up dust into the air. There's all this construction going on. All this, and by all this construction, what I really mean is all this destruction. There's all this destruction going on. Everything around us is getting paved, covered up, mown over, without any inkling of watching the environment around us to wonder, even for a moment, if some of this construction might need to stop immediately. Some of these topics scare people. And they scare people because when we start talking about closing things down, stopping things for a while, fasting, fasting, when we talk about going without, it can sound a little short. It can sound like you're shorting people. I don't want to go to lunch or dinner or to celebrate. Here we come up on this dust that it's, you might see it over my shoulder, over my left shoulder. Uh, you might not. It really, it really doesn't matter if you see it or not. It's happening. These environmental challenges that we're going through are not even just in big cities like this city that I'm in. If you hunt back just about a month, just four weeks through my videos, you'll find that I was just in Big Bend National Park where all of this same construction was going on in the same way. And at the same time, there were anomalies going on in the wild where there was a group of bears that were gathering. The smaller bears were gathering at the campgrounds in Big Bend National Park in the Chizos Mountains. The smaller bears were gathering because they were being forced out of the more rewarding areas of the national park in terms of food and, and water and shelter. They're being forced out because there's a shortage. There's a shortage of food going on right now. And the park services continued to accept reservations. For me, this was a dream come true because I love being immersed in wildlife. Now, as an observer of wildlife, I also noticed these anomalies. These anomalies included a huge gathering of small bears because they were being forced out of other areas in their own region because of challenging situations that had to do with lack of resources. Here in this country where I'm at, you don't really know if you have a lack of resources because everything seems so abundant. When you start to notice and recognize absolute health and transformational health in people, you start to recognize that wealth, even wealth itself, like monetary wealth, cannot buy that kind of energy. It can't. But what is the cost if all of that energy of health is being put into something that is deficient for, it, that's causing a deficiency for the overall system. What are we doing to our own health? Are we shorting ourselves? Are we being short with ourselves? If we put off something because we recognize that it's causing some problems, if we put off some things for a little while and help to reestablish the health and well-being of what was once there, imagine the profound turnaround that would occur. So I wrote a song called Reimagined, and it talks about this. It talks about this concept. I've shared a lot of songs that show controversial subjects. Like for an example, it might be controversial for me to say these bears were gathering unusually due to drought related circumstances. Some people may deny that. And then some people might call that as a climate denier or a challenge denier. 
or they might even just discredit me because I don't have the credentials like for an example a, a doctorate or a degree in the field that I'm talking about however just like in the last career where I kicked ass in my IT department I didn't have a degree in that field either I just had the raw experience sheer will and creativity to do what it is that I did and that's what I continue to do now even in these circumstances you'll see it's like I'm struggling I'm struggling I'm struggling I felt like I was struggling but really I was just getting stronger and more refined to permit you the time that it takes to hear what I'm saying my contribution my contribution to all of this stream of thought has to do with wildlife and nature so I gave you the time to slow down and listen to some of the things to where you can see more than just hey that's a nice song I gave you the time to talk with the people with whom I'm also trying to talk like let's say our fathers I gave you the time even to talk with me directly if you needed to but mostly I gave you the time to hear what I'm seeing which is if you look over my shoulder you'll see it doesn't look exactly sky blue some of the things in our air some of the things in our atmosphere might seem irreparable to the common person with common sense but if we go just a step beyond common sense and add to it something called logic or intelligence it's not all that artificial suddenly one awakening creates another awakening and so forth that's just the the law of evolution and we're all evolving don't ever mistake for a fact that evolution has already ended in Alaska some three years ago maybe we saw caribou eating bugs as they emerged from the lakeside from the thawing lakesides caribou don't normally have bugs on their list of dietary uh, calories intake that's just not something they normally have however just like that porcupine I saw on the road that I'm able to recall because my mind is, is sharp enough to do those things just like that porcupine I saw on the road in Yellowstone four years ago I saw a porcupine feeding on another porcupine on a road killed porcupine this year in Big Bend National Park the bears were eating each other's scat I saw that when you notice anomalies that are hard to argue with when you notice content that's even hard to watch hard to record do you ever get the feeling that maybe we've always changed the channel whenever that sad commercial came on with the starving life form of your choice in your imagination when you visualize what I'm talking about you know the one where the song comes on and you hear that singer and you know you just know it's one of those commercials have our parents have our our families taught us to change the channel in the past so that's what we do and that's why we overlook the, the vanilla sky that's why we overlook the cream colored sandy hazy horizon have we gotten to the point where we're just indifferent because we're indifferent 
where we just want to argue because we want to argue. Not long ago, I showed something to a very close relative by association, and they discredited what I was showing. I showed them something that I came up with, an idea that I came up with. And that someone else went ahead and, and, and ran with and got to production. And that some of that other person took credit for what I did. It's okay. I mean I'm not I'm not officially a representative, just like I'm not officially a representative of the National Park Service. And even though I'm not an official representative of the National Park Service, I am a representative of humanity. And if there are people bringing toddlers to an area where bears are congregating in ways that seem detrimental or new because of challenging, because of challenges, or detrimental or new, circumstances that seem detrimental, new, or unusual because of challenges that we can also observe at the same time, it would behoove us if those people we are employing to do those jobs could recognize those same things. It would, it would absolutely make sense if we could recognize the things in the atmosphere as an observer of, let's say for an example, I worked for the EPA. If I worked for the EPA, then technically I should be able to see the way the sun is obscured, not just from the, from the outstanding amount of, of, of dirt on my own window up above, but also because of the atmosphere. There's tissues in the, in the brush here, hanging in the brush. Tissues hanging in the brush. Just like it just got blown there. It must have just gotten blown there. I'm sure it wasn't a person just sticking tissue in the brush. And at the same time, I'm about to go for a walk in my place of discussion where some of you are either helping me to have this discussion or you're just kind of overlooking it because this guy's just rambling, you know, rambling. Wow. This is the second time I've seen this Tesla in front of me. It's got this oil slick color. It's gorgeous. I'll probably try to capture the color of this car so I can add it into the documentary that I'm making about what happened today. So today during this video, if you didn't notice, there were a lot of different scenes that were probably playing. If I recorded some, I really don't know if I'm going to, but I am going to include this. The color of this, this Tesla is just amazing. I like to show you things that make you smile, that make you think, that make you go, huh, this, you're right, you know, we haven't been talking about these things. And I like to bring an aspect of, and I'm going to reintroduce this concept one more time. I, I do this quite frequently, but this is no joke. This is not something I made up. This isn't a uh, topic up for discussion. This is just basically as it, as it happened. And there are witnesses to many of the things that I'm discussing, including having prayers in the desert where the wind just comes directly to you. These things happen. You have to think on a level of faith in order to have the faith that we can bypass some of these obstacles. Otherwise, we're just kind of gnarled up and quite frankly, dead on the inside. But this, this thing I was going to talk about is this, this particular piece of coral looking at the screen, I shouldn't be looking at what's in my hand so I don't act like I'm fumbling around. This piece of coral is bound by a piece of a guitar string, a guitar string that broke on my guitar. And the piece of coral came from the ocean. I was at South Padre. Yesterday itself, on this channel, I shared a video about South, South Padre and some of the things I saw there going on. But I was there and I prayed right there in the ocean for the health and well-being of the place around me. I even tried to clean up, but as you saw in the video, there was too much to clean up by myself. 
And also, if you really looked at that video, the, the, the blood sucking insects that were on the inland uh, pools of water where I was looking for wildlife and there was only just those blood sucking creatures that really bit the heck out of me. All of those things were causing me great discomfort while I was doing those things. And I recognize that it's a lot of work to clean up some of these areas because of the infestations and the and the, the absolute rank and stagnant, I guess, rubbish that helps contribute to some of the things that are brewing, the trouble that's brewing. So in yesterday's video, I was showing this video about South Padre. And in today, I'm talking about the same place. I was there, I was praying for the health of this place. And I put my hands into the ocean and I asked, dear God, please God, please show me, uh, present me with something that I can use as a piece of jewelry, as a conversational starter, as an icebreaker. And so I had my hands in the ocean and suddenly the, the waves washed back out and there was this, this piece of coral in my hand. It's shaped exactly the way it was shaped. It has a, it's, it's basically a, it's like a, it's like a loop. So I was able to add a bail that I made out of broken guitar string and then just put it on a chain. This is something, if you read any book in the past uh, that had an example, like for an example in Clan of the Cave Bear, there are amulets, there are things that can be bestowed to you in these examples in the books. I mean, if we're going to go by examples in the books about things that could happen, we'll also be all inclusive and occasionally we'll use the examples that are coming from the Bible itself. But in the clan of the cave bear, the, the thing that was, was happening with, with this central character was she would receive amulets, things of confirmation. I'm, I put my hands in the ocean, I prayed, I asked for something, and it showed up in my hands. And as if, just because I am an only child and I've always uh, kept an unlimited um, number of requests in mind, as if just because of that, I asked for another piece. I asked for a second piece of jewelry to receive. The other piece I received is much different, but it's, the same, it's of the same exact pattern. And, it, and the way that it's designed is it had a central chamber, a tiny hole that goes through it. And I was able to just route a small piece of wire through that and make a bale out of the wire that continuously it goes in and it comes out and then it turns into the, the bale part. I've shown that off in several videos as well. The reason I'm having this conversation right now is because all of this talk about having, you know, the, the debris in the air having these unseasonable challenges that all of, even our wildlife is facing and all of humanity is facing. All of these things, including the difficulties having a conversation with our fathers, it starts with you. It starts with you, the viewer. If I'm telling you that I'm having these conversations, rich conversations with rich people who are absolutely wealthy and that I've turned off my phone, turned it off so that I can't receive any communication with even with the rich people. If I tell you that I'm doing that, it's not because I'm being short or shorting our relationship. I'm not denying our ability to go places together or to hang out together because I don't want to see you. I'm doing it because we will not see each other anymore in the not too distant future without changing what's around us. And in the meantime, as long as I'm having a great time doing what's in my heart to do, then I'm naturally going to be sharing what it is that I'm supposed to be sharing with whoever I'm supposed to be sharing it with you. So if I'm sharing this with you and today is your first day of seeing this type of presentation, thank you so much for visiting. I, I generally talk in, in terms that are inclusive. And I'm also someone who was raised in Texas. And I'm also 45 years old. And I'm also a, an only child. And I'm also, the list goes on and on. And I'm also raised in a male-oriented society where for some reason women still accept getting paid less than men. And accept being only recognized for certain traits, which quite frankly are not all that admirable when it comes down to it. 
The most impressive trait that anyone can have is compassion. Gratitude and compassion are something that comes from love. If we don't love, well, we can't be compassionate. Once we're compassionate, we start to take on the ideas that if we see something like that channel that we wanted to change, that's going to cause our heartstrings to move, depending on how our former generations taught us, might trigger an automated response. Do you see, do you see that flying overhead? That is to me, that synchronicity might trigger an automated response you got to watch out if you're if you're not paying attention you might have some automated things going on in your own life if you are paying attention then chances are you're going to understand that this even this video itself is absolutely something that you were meant to watch. And as you start to recognize you were meant to watch this, you might start to question why it is you're on the receiving end of this conversation. And if you're not able to communicate with me directly, if you're not able to see that I respond to you when you post on this channel, if you're not aware that there's a conversation going on, it's possible it's because you are meant to come have a conversation with someone else. Maybe you need to talk with someone who is a mutual conversationalist. And maybe this doesn't even apply to you in terms of conversation. Maybe all you needed to do is hear, hey, let me look on the horizon. I'm, I work for the EPA. I should be checking out. I should be looking at some of these things around me. Wow, I never thought to use the plants and the uh, unseasonable blooms and, and this, that, and the other as as a, a benchmark for my for my observations well now you now you are completely free to do that you're completely free to notice the congregation of wild animals that's occurring in ways that it has not occurred before you're completely free to think with your own mind about what it is that that has drawn you to the role that you're feeling right now and some of us may need to shuffle around and that's you know that's that's being mindful. We, we do need to understand the requirements to help one another. I'm not trying to shut down industries by saying we need to do less. We need to do less. Sometimes we need to make less things. I'm trying to bring to attention that perhaps until we're doing the jobs we're meant to be, we shouldn't be collecting the benefits and circumstances of a park personnel representative, for an example, if we're not going to represent the part, the part, the park in the way that it me is meant to be represented, these are these are just thoughts. It's not again. It's not a it's not a, uh, a daunting thing to tell the truth. This is just an observation. A lot of you, anytime that we do business with somebody, you're familiar with this. You'll get an email right away. How was this service? How was this? How was this thing that you that you received? You know, from from our from our mega warehouse, you know, in fact, we're going to send you brochures from now on. We're going to send you brochures that tell you about our tireless efforts of, of helping to, to, uh, to support the, the environment. We're going to, we're going to send more paperwork to you and more surveys and more things. A lot of you are familiar with these surveys and you fill them out. This is kind of a survey itself. This survey, as you watch this video, which touches on every subject that you can probably imagine and then some, is just telling you the simple things that I'm thinking about. And if it's too much trouble for me to talk with somebody about that, to where I actually turn off my phone and move on with my day, even though it's other people thinking that they're telling me, bye Felicia, If you recognize that, it's very likely that you recognize a little bit of yourself. The question is, are you the one going, bye Felicia? Or are you the one going, hey, how's it going? As I walk these trails and greet the people who I greet with or without receiving any kind of confirmation from them, as I share these 
thoughts with or without receiving confirmation from the people who are watching these things. As I ask the questions, like, can you watch this? And then maybe it'll help make sense of this if you watch this next. Those are just conversational opportunities. And if you're not following through with some of the things that are being asked of you, and you're still requesting things of me to do, that's what's known as an energy vampire. And the last thing I'm going to do is allow anyone to take from my well-being when it's my given right to have absolute health and wealth, perfection. I'm not going to let anyone just take from that. And so as I check out of certain things, check out of the option to hang out at the group inspired ritualistic, how was the weather? How were the, the spurs doing? How about them cowboys discussions? I'm just going to free up more time for better, richer, more rewarding conversations that are more centralized around what it is that we're here for. What we think we knew, the world as we knew it, we've already said it can't continue. We said that right after the pandemic. But if you look around, we're still masked up with or without a mask. Many of us are still wearing a full face mask and have no concept of how to take that thing off. The first thing we have to do is be honest with ourselves and then we'll stop having all the troubles that we're having, expressing a conversation with someone else in peace as it was meant to be. So it's just a choice. Have you decided? Until next time, peace, love, and all that old school stuff. Just to close this video, listen to how quiet it is. Hopefully you heard that bird. It's important to note each and every time possible, maybe, just how quiet these woods are at this park, one of my favorite places to walk here in town, the Friedrich Wilderness Area. Thanks again for watching.